Okay, so there come times when I don't have an opportunity to make sourdough. I'm out of town or I'm busy working or something like that. And I ask my darling wife, hey, would you mind making some sourdough? And then she always like texts me or calls me and asks me for the recipe because she doesn't want to watch my videos for making basic sourdough because she doesn't like that it's more than one video. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to take you right through my process right from feeding the starter initially through baking the sourdough this is the video that saved my marriage or sourdough or something like that so phase one friday night because i like to bake on sunday morning so friday night i got my starter i just pulled it fresh out of the fridge so this has been in there since last um saturday okay you can see there right it uh, it already peaked it's uh done it if i left it a few more days it would start to get pretty acidic but I'm going to get it on here and remove all but 40 grams. So I know the weight of my jar and therefore I just take that weight which is like 311 grams and add um, uh, 30, oh yeah actually it's <laughs> everything but 30 grams. And get it down to anywhere from 340 to 345 grams remaining. I like to use this paper towel and I just use that as my discard because I'm not needing any of this stuff. 342, perfect. I'll quickly tear it and then just with some room temperature filtered water, I'm going to add 45 grams. I don't quite do the uh, same one to one to one ratio that I used to. I like to go a little bit heavier on the flour and the water. Now I'm just going to use this awesome silicone spoon. I love the shape of this and quickly get everything down, scrape those sides. I like to pre-mix it here because then you get that bacteria better mixed into that liquid so it will be a little bit more even. And then I'm going to add an equal amount of flour. And this is just unbleached all-purpose flour. So I'm going to add right around 45 grams. I'll add a little bit more because I had 47 there. Half ah, 46 will do. And again, just going to give this a nice little stir. As soon as this is mixed, I'm going to throw the lid back on it. I'm going to leave it on the counter overnight. And this is just going to get everything all super happy, healthy, energetic, and ready to rock in the morning when I'll be making my leaven. So I'll just scrape this stuff off of here. And there we go. Perfect. So I'll just clean up those spoons and I'm good until the morning. So it's the next morning and this uh, sourdough starter um, definitely rolls up. It's kind of on its way back down, but it's nice and healthy and active. So it's time to make the leaven. Now I'm doing two, um, two loaves uh, with 500 grams flour in each. If you're just doing a single one, you could just have uh, a half this from what I'm doing. But I'm going to be putting in 80 grams of this starter. Excuse me. Super handy silicone spoon to get that out. And with the amount of starter that I've got in that jar, I always make sure that I've got enough to do this much um, at the same time. In fact, I'll still need to remove just a little bit from it in order to uh, wind up with the quantity in here I, I need before it goes back into the fridge. There we go. And then I'm going to just uh, double from there the amount of filtered water that goes in. So I'll go with 160. 160 grams. There we are. And then again, just like I did with the starter, I'm just going to give it a nice little mix. It won't get fully incorporated here, but it will get uh, a lot of that yeasty goodness just mixed into that water. Distributed better than it was a moment ago. And then I'm going to add 160 grams of again just all purposed or all purpose unbleached flour and that's oh I think my cat's going nuts <laughs> and there we are again we'll just mix that up really nicely with this spoon here and then I'm going to get it covered up and place it somewhere warm I usually throw this in my incubator um, at like 80 degrees Fahrenheit just because that kind of speeds up um, this leaven uh, rising process. Alternatively, um, if your house isn't super warm, you could throw it up on top of the refrigerator. Uh, there tends to be a lot of heat there. If you are operating your 
oven or something like that in the kitchen. You could kind of place it on the counter close to that and that would also be a nice warm space just for this leaven to, to take off really nicely. So we'll do that. Just cover it up. I really like these bowl covers. Um, quite a bit easier than um, using a towel or something like that or plastic wrap. Um, you can see through it. It goes on super quickly. So now I just want to refeed my starter. So I'll just tear my scale again and remove. Oh, just have to take out about five grams there. Perfect. And I will do the, the 45 and 45 feeding again. And then I'm going to pop this back into the fridge until next Friday. Um, if I'm on vacation or something like that, if I'm off work and I'm baking more often, um, obviously I might be baking more than once a week. But this works super well for keeping our family uh, inbred for the week. So I'm just going to get this fed, pop this back in the fridge. Um, I'll let that leaven rise for a few hours before I go to uh, engage in the auto lease for the for the actual sourdough. All right, so I'm ready for the auto lease, which is really just mixing the flour and the water. I'm going for just a plain white sourdough here. So I'm using 500 grams of just unbleached all-purpose flour. And I'm going with a 72% hydration, which in this case means 360 grams or milliliters of uh, unfiltered water. Of course, I just weigh it out by the gram. And that's uh, really nice and easy. So now I'm going to mix it all up here. Just using my one hand uh, until it is all really nicely mixed together and then we're going to let it rest uh, for probably at least a couple hours. We're only a few hours in uh, to the leaven doing its thing so that's going to basically create a nice large population of that yeast uh, in order to ferment the sourdough. So just mix this up here for another minute. So really after only about 30 seconds or so this is really kind of nicely mixed. You can see my hands a disaster so I'm just going to use this uh, silicone uh, scraper here just to clean off my hands, get everything into here. I'm going to cover it up and I will just leave it doing this until we're ready to add the leaven. So after about six hours that leaven as you can see is just poofy, jiggly, pillowy, definitely active and ready to go. So I'm going to be adding this to this, uh, um, the actual dough here which was doing the auto lease for right around two hours. And I'm going to add 125 grams, which, oh, 126, that'll work. Um, I'm actually going to quickly do that with both of my loaves that I'm doing here. So then that makes 25%. Uh, based on the, uh, based on the flour. Oh, right. Okay, cool. So now that I've got that, I'm just going to quickly moisten my hands with some filtered water here. Just help it, uh, help prevent it from getting too stuck to me. I like to just kind of poke down into here, like so, to help work some of that leaven in. And now I'm going to just kind of like stretch it a little bit, pinch it, and fold it over and in. And we're going to uh, mix here for a couple of minutes. So that there is pretty well mixed, so I'm just going to quickly mix up the other one, cover them back up with those uh, plastic lids there, and uh, give them a half hour before we add some salt. So after 30 minutes, I'm going to be adding the salt. So I've got fine sea salt here, and it is uh, 9 grams uh, per loaf that I'm going to do. Let's get that in there. Again, just moistening my hands with the filtered water, doing that same poke in method and then the exact same kind of pinching and folding uh, mixing here. You can see that the, well, hopefully you can see that the texture of the dough is quite a bit different now after that half hour with the leaven in it. It's way smoother. Oh, awesome. Okay, so it's going to take me uh, probably a minute and a half, two minutes to get this all mixed through here.
Okay, and that should be nicely thoroughly mixed here. Uh, so I'm going to again um, put the uh, get the plastic wrap over top of it and uh, let it sit for another half hour. I am going. I am putting these up on top of the refrigerator just so it's a little bit warmer. Just because my kitchen right now is around 70 Fahrenheit, so just keeping it a touch warmer um, in these uh, during these rest periods. So I'm going to quickly work with my other loaf. So after that 30 minutes, I'm ready for my first stretch and fold. So I'm just going to kind of tuck my fingers up underneath, stretch it up right to the point where it feels like it can't go any further without tearing and stretch. Now because this is a slightly lower hydration uh, sourdough, it uh, isn't quite as goopy and doesn't stretch as far as some others might. However, that works out. So I'm going to cover it up again and I'll repeat this probably twice more every half hour. All right, so second stretch and fold. Still a little firm here. That is a-okay. All right, so I'll uh, let it rest another half hour. All right, so another stretch and fold here. So this being the third one, It'll be the last one that I do. And at this point, I'm just going to return this covered to the top of the fridge. I'm going to let it continue to ferment um, just until it looks like uh, it's uh, the fermentation is taking uh, hold quite nicely. So we'll be back when that happens. Okay, so this sourdough has sat for a couple of hours since then. And you can see it's got this really nice jiggle to it. So it's got a lot of air going on on the inside. So. It's time to do a little pre-shaping, and I'm actually going to wind up pre-shaping both of the sourdough loaves that I have going on. So I'm just going to prep a little space there, and I'm just going to tuck my fingers underneath here, getting them nice and floured up, get it underneath, and then putting it on an unfloured surface so that it sticks really nicely to the counter. And then it can adhere, get nice and tight, just like that, right? It's a nice little pre-shaping. Must be the same with the second one here. Out. Oh, this one seems a little stickier. Do the same shaping. We'll set it aside and then probably give it about 10 minutes or so. And uh, then we'll do a final shaping and get them into the bathrooms. All right, after that 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and prep these guys. I'm going to take my bannetons here that I had covered them up with and just throw a little extra rice flour in them just to help prevent them from sticking. I'm going to go to remove them in the morning. Then I'm just going to grab this, give it a little final shape here, just treating it super gently. Just like so, nice and tight there, a little bit more rice flour on top, and then right into the banneton. And then of course, just repeat with the second one here, get that flour out of the way. And then I'm going to cover these back up with the uh, those same plastic covers and get them in the fridge, and then we'll be ready to bake in the morning. Morning of the bake, I've had my oven preheating with the cast iron in it for the last hour at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it is time to actually get these into the oven. So I'm just going to use parchment paper in order to uh, help prevent the bottom from burning when they're in the cast iron. I'm going to use my pizza peel to make it super easy just to flip over and if there wasn't as much rice flour as there is on it now, I would also just be giving it a light dusting with that. Now I'm just going to... Give it a little score here. We're going to pop them into the oven. And get them onto my combo cookers. Just like that. With the lid side being the bottom, and then what is normally the bottom being the lid. 
I'm going to turn the oven down to 440 Fahrenheit, once I get this on here, and uh, let it go for 30 minutes. Alright, so, after half an hour, I'm going to pop these lids off. I'm going to reduce the heat down to 430 Fahrenheit and give it another 20 or so minutes. Okay, so after 20 minutes, I'm going to pull these out here. This is the perfect amount of doneness for us with uh, the little mouths we have around here. Snag the other one up too so you can take a peek. And now it's very important to just let these loaves rest um, for at least a couple of hours just so everything can kind of finish setting on the inside, establishing that crumb. And here we are, as they say, the moment of truth. Slice right into the middle here. Brilliant. And look, there we are. Had a really nice rise on it, nothing super crazy, but definitely good enough for, uh, for what I was hoping for. And this, uh, this bread here is, it's amazingly uh, soft, it's moist, it's chewy. Um, I'm really happy with a crumb like this. It does have a couple of larger bubbles in it, but overall it holds butter really well because we like to toast our sourdough. So there we are. That is my sourdough process. Uh, just really basic sourdough from start to finish. So yeah, hope you give it a whirl and uh, hopefully that helped some of you out there. And until next time, keep it at 11.